Initially, I started working on a version of the story which was about a girl who actually hears the voice of God in her head. Early on, I guess, like the mental health and religious elements were like the main starting points of sort of looking at where one started and the other began. Martha Clark is playing Maud. She was the first person on board casting after quite a long trawl to find the right actor. And she's phenomenal. She's appeared in lots of very accomplished stage work, smaller roles in films, so this is her breakout feature lead. I knew from my first audition that I was just desperate to get this part after I met Rose because I'd loved the script so much. Martha just came to the auditions. I think she was actually pretty much the last person that we saw. And she was a little bit different to what had actually been originally picturing for the character. It's just quite exciting to see a character that's just been this thing in your head for so long actually then be a, a person in front of you. I was quite worried before starting just because I find lots of the subject matter quite upsetting and I think also in lots of ways Maud is like a similar age to me playing her from Wales like I am and I think that lots of people at certain times in their life could have fallen into a point where they're just not really looked after in the way that I feel I luckily am. And this idea of kind of intense loneliness that somehow, even in this world of super connections, people can still be totally alone. Maud uses the terminology of religion to express what she's feeling, but what she's feeling is much more to do with the things she's been frustrated in in her life. Because she doesn't have a way of venting, it builds up and becomes toxic, unleashes itself in these extremely dangerous and, and terrifying ways. I play Amanda, who is uh, dying of cancer. Uh, you, you can't do that. What? You, you slipped those cards in. Did I? Jennifer Ely, we were so excited uh, when she agreed to do the film. I mean, it was, it was a really big deal for us. She's also such an amazing collaborator. It's a tremendously brave performance for her as well, physically. She really threw herself into it. We couldn't obviously imagine anyone else doing it now. To Maud, Amanda is quite exotic. Amanda is an artist. I don't think Maud's ever met anybody quite like Amanda before. And Amanda's at a interesting time in her life. It's too late to be visiting now. She's lonely. She's expecting me. Scared and bored. She's sort of preparing for her death. And she's had a lot of celebration and, um, and flamboyance around her and a lot of fun and a lot of fun friends and acquaintances. But I think she's realizing that she has very few intimates, perhaps realizing that she hasn't allowed anybody to really love or know her. And this sort of interesting young woman comes who is sort of fascinating. I don't think I've done many things where the director has been so involved in putting together the way characters present themselves physically, and I've enjoyed that a lot. Directors are sometimes a little bit scared of venturing into that side of things. The character of Amanda, we need to, as an audience, sort of get why Maud, this, this weird young woman, kind of becomes so enraptured and, and enamoured with her and obsessed. And that's easy to do with Jennifer Ely, I guess. She's pretty, she's pretty cool. We're done. Mm -hmm. St. Maud is a lot about loneliness. There's lots of different types of isolation that are happening within it. I thought it was beautifully written and explored. I liked the mixture of gothic, psychological thriller, suspense. I think Rose is extraordinary and um, I think she's making something very interesting and wonderful. When you pray, do you get a response? <laughs>